Good old majestic glass sea. We're gonna go up here and take a look at it. Right now we're just gonna take the roof off. If I take the roof off, just see what's going on. In case I had to get a blower on it or something. There's some patches here. You see all that fracturing right there? That's an indicator this roof has already reached failure. But you can see right here, what you're looking at is that's the decking, and there's no protection underneath there. A lot of times, I don't know if you can see that little, that little slit right there. See it? The water going to drool down in there, through down here, to get the lamination. You can see a lot of it's all compromised. It's because they don't put protection on there. Somebody has mucked a whole bunch of stuff on there. I think we got a little rot right here. This is us slicing it right here. That's not the coach. That was us doing it. Got a little bit of. Now, this has been undercover for two weeks in our other bay. We've got another building. In our other building, I put them all in there if I know that they kind of leak, sort of leak, maybe want to leak. And we put them all in there. Um, but you can still see it's wet. You can still see that there. It'll never dry out unless you pull it out. So now, I mean, hear that? That don't sound bad. It really doesn't. You're like, that doesn't sound too bad. Somebody comes up here and says, hey, you know what we'll do is we'll spray this roof. Would you want to spray over that? Of course not. That'd be crazy, spraying over a roof deck with damage on it. And the, those, most of those guys, they just have um, about five days. You know, when they do a training course on them, they get like five days of training on that um, spray-on system for like RV armor. That's from what we're told. Five days. That's not a lot at all. And you'd figure that's in a class. They train a whole class for five days and uh, you know obviously if there's a bunch of guys over there or gals, whoever, people, and everybody is not getting their hands into everything. And again all that is is a coating. We, this, what we put on is not a coating. We put on a real membrane. You know, you're gonna get a real commercial roof here. So, let's see, uh, let me show you some of this here. Let me switch hands and I'll go, I'll get a pocket knife. There we go. A lot of shake around there. Oh, I hit the zoom button, sorry. Alright. There you go. Let's see what we got under this thing. See, there's no protection. Just put it right there. See, there's no protection on there. So I want to go down to where I showed you where this... Remember I showed you where that is? Right there. Okay. No protection on there. And that's what caused, see that slit right there? There's a slit right here, see it? That one, that's what caused it. It's the edge of the phylon, it's really sharp. And it dug into the, the roofing, you can see it right there. See the edge of the, the phylon right here. Dug into it and made that, breach that. We put the protective strips on here, that's the way we do them, that's the right way to do it. But this is obviously going to need to be redecked for sure. We got another booger here, same scenario. You can see all the cracking and failing. But, and in this case, it looks like this roofing was protruded more than on there. You can see what I was talking about right here? This one looks like it's just a shade, not very much. But that's that's how they do them at the RV centers. 30 minutes, let's put that roof on, get it out of here. 30 minutes. The other thing you can tell, there isn't very much glue on this. It really isn't. There's not a lot of glue. Kind of see. Here's, their, here's a good example of their patch. This is their repair. Somebody do this repair? Right, somebody did this repair. Look. They stapled it all down there. Yep. 
Okay. That's all that was. You know, is that the look like the turn about? Yeah. It looks like they just went over it with another. Was that the yes, piece membrane. of tape? Is it membrane? Yeah. Yeah, that's membrane. But it's not glued very well. None of this is. So this thing is seeing better days. We'll get her back in shape. That's what we do here. You can see over here somebody has mooked a whole lot of caulking on there. I get nervous when I see a lot of caulking like that. It tells me something ain't right. If you get up here on one of these coaches and you see mounds and mounds of caulking, especially on this termination bar, if you're going to buy one, don't buy it. Try to find another one. Because if there's that much caulking on there, there's a problem. We did a, uh, it's a jamboree. Go and look at the jamboree video. I believe it's a jamboree. And you'll see somebody at the front turn bar, which is up here by the bunk, and we had to rebuild the whole bunk and all. But way at the, on, on this side, I remember, the whole bunk fell out on us anyways. But right here on the jamboree, the one I'm talking about, it had eight or nine layers of tape on there. They just kept taping over, taping over, taping over, taping over. So uh, <laughs> that is a pure indicator you've got some issues. So what this is is called a ply foam roof. Give me a run down here. What ply foam is, you got this thin layer of plywood right here. Then under there, you got that, that knife handy? Right yeah, I can see it from here. You got that knife right there? Oh, that's really wet. There we go. Then up underneath there is foam. See the foam? Real thin layer of plywood, that's glue. That's, that's the way the system functions. I've seen jobs that have come in here that people have tried to fix and they'll tear out all the foam. And we had one in particular, it's called a, um, give me a second here, a uh, Four Wind Siesta. Go watch that video. When they put that roof on, they cut through, they brought the plywood up, the decking here, that thin plywood, and they cut with a skill saw and they cut through all of these trusses, especially down the back. And I don't think it was very much bigger than this. What an absolute mess that was. So we had to fix all that structurality. And then somebody in the front here tore out all the foam and tried to fill it with regular batten insulation. It, it was a mess. That's not the way you do it. You have to kind of keep these back the way they're designed. If not, a lot of things don't function properly. So we want to keep as much strength in there as it was designed to do. Now they're a great system if they're not leaking and uh, if they're put together well. It's like a three-legged stool. Knock one leg out, then the stool's no good. So that's what we try to do. We want to stay close to what the manufacturer did. And obviously, you can see we make some other adjustments and, you know, we uh, improve it. But overall, the basic design is still there. We may use a better adhesive. We may use a different decking or we may use even some metal channel or whatever. But the point is the design is still the same, and I want to keep it that way. I'm not going to come up here and put 5H decking on this thing. That's crazy. You can't come up here and put, when this has to be redecked, okay, this is all laminated together. All this decking is all laminated to the foam. You can't go back in here and try to staple all that. You can't do it because now there's still no strength on it. All you're doing is essentially putting that down. The little staples, what's the staple going to hold on that 8th inch? Here it is. Here's that little plywood. You think a staple is going to hold on to that? Of course not. So it's got to be all glued together. It has to be laminated back together. And that's what we do. But I've seen projects where they just, and that Siesta is one of them, where they redeck the roof and they stapled it down. We did a, uh, a bounder. There's a bounder on there that came that needed the second roof and the second here. But anyhow, there was a, another shop in this area that redecked it and they shot staples through one and a quarter inch staples into the foam. What is that going to do? Nothing. The foam isn't going to hold a staple. Anyhow, watch that video. You know, we don't want you to have any troubles with these roofs. That's why we take the time we do it properly. You know, some things get we're to the point where we have to take a little more time, but it may put our calendar back, and some folks may hope to get the ones that are behind them hope to get in sooner, but I can't properly just put one together that isn't done the right way just for the sake of getting another camper in here. So, But uh, this will give you kind of an idea of you know what we run into i'm trying to give you some pointers here obviously we've got some rust right here so obviously this is still leaking but look how much caulking is on there so that's still leaking you know we got issues here 
this is what they want you to do at the RV manufacturer and the RV center. When you buy it, they go, hey, when you see this, take some more caulking and smear it on there. Just smear it on there some more. And then in three, four months, go back up there. If you see it again, put some more on. When you go back up there in another yet three or four months, and you see it, put yet some more on. And the only ones putting more on is a moron. It, the system is not going to work. It's kind of like buying tires, and then when you buy the tires, the salesperson comes out with your work order and says, Thank you, we appreciate you trading with us. And by the way, fill those tires up with air every three or four months, because they're going to go dead flat on you. You wouldn't want those tires now, would you? And look how thin this is. That is super thin. So we use a 60 mil. And we'll show you all that too. And again, there's a whole bunch of videos up there. You can watch those and get an idea of what we do. But we'll be back. Right on the set. All right, giving you a majestic update. Here's our majestic. All right, what we're doing is redecking this roof. You see all the adhesive we got in here so far. We are loading her up. We'll redeck this roof. So what we did on the inside is we've braced it up. We pushed it up just a little bit. And then when we release it, at least it'll be nice and flat. So we've got to get in here and do this one as well. And that's what they're working on. You can see how, I don't know if you really can see, but it does have a slight belly in here. So we're going to get this raised up and then we'll adhere everything all back. By the time all the glue sets, plus we're squirting glue up down inside here, everywhere to make sure it stays all tight up in there. So we're going to get this thing really snug. You can really see how strong these are. These are systems, a lot of people wonder if you can walk on them. You gotta figure these these blocks are about 80 pounds a piece. So that's quite a bit. And you know, if you have this system done right, they are super strong and they're super light. So I love the design on them, I really do. A lot of places come in here and they'll tear things apart or they'll staple it. I don't know what you're gonna staple to. If you think about it, let's see if I can get down here and show you. They'll take Luan, whether it's quarter inch or whatever, and they'll staple it to that. Uh, how are you going to get a staple in this? It's going to go right underneath that is foam. So you're not going to get anything to stick on that. It has to be glued. That's where you get your strength to it. So we don't staple anything. All of this here is all glued. We're just using those cinder blocks to keep it in place so that glue really sets up well. And obviously we take them off. We don't let them travel like that. It'd probably be hazardous. And I don't know if they blow off, but you know, it's still it's just an aesthetic look. You wouldn't want blocks up on your roof. But, uh, <laughs> But anyhow, that's our Majestic update. I wanted to let you know where we're at with it. Now this uh, coach is 99 wide, sheets are 96. So if you're wondering what this is, this is gonna be our strip here. And then you see we brought this one over this way. On the opposite side, you'll have another one of these and we'll cut these strips and put them all in there. That just kind of offsets it to give it some strength. You don't ever wanna just lay one side, then you won't have any strength on the other side. So that's where we're, where we're at. Got a little camera going on the back here too. That's what all this wire is for. It's going to be one of those backup cams. So we're working on that. And that's about it on our little Majestic. More to come! All right, we got our Majestic over here. So we got some glue going on. And uh, we want to put more glue on this. I want more glue on this. That's what we're doing. We're applying more. We're putting more on. Put more on, more on. That's where we're at. Once we get that, roll it over, and we use a big roller. Pack her down. And then we move on to, there's your vents and so forth. We'll move on to that. Cut them out. Pull them out. Curves. This is the back of the Majestic. That's what this is. We had, the file on was really compromised, and it kept cracking, but we had some issues on the side here, you can see. And down there, that's where the light assembly was, and that was all rotted. Then over on the other side, you can see some there, and also in this light assembly right here, all rotted. So we took all that out, and we're rebuilding new backers for it. So we'll have some, basically some strong stock behind there to screw the light assembly back on. And that's what we're making up now. Then we'll reskin it, and once we get that done, we got to put the Phylon on there. So we're gonna get some mold kill on all of this. The mold kill we use, it will. Um, but it, it, it's so strong that when it gets into the pores of the mold, it actually shrinks it so tight that it kills it. It's kind of uh, interesting, the science behind that. But uh, we'll be soaking it down with that. And then, so we'll show you these little blockers when we get them in. All right, let's see what's going on on the back side of this Majestic. 
what we did was put some the back piece of that fiberglass that was rotted so now we're redecking it right here so we're reskinning it that's what we're doing got a new skin on here we're gonna put another one down this lower end so we're working on it right now and we can get the fiberglass the file on we can get it glued on there and we're prepping it right now all right these are majestic we are done finally we got our brand on there rvroofinstall.com we got November of 18 is when we installed it so what we're doing now is just cleaning up and then uh, we're gonna put a bell cap on that yes, sir, I got no beer. yep we're gonna set that then we replace this whole back phylon made some repairs down there in the light I don't know if we got all that on video I can't remember the last clip sometimes we get busy and I kind of fall behind on a couple of clips so but uh, now what we did do similar to another one we've done we put these mounting bolts right here so he can put some solar panels on there so that's what he wanted and that's what we put on there so he's going to design his own frame and everything but we've got the flashing detail right up underneath the air conditioner there and obviously we got these curbs all welded in now these curbs this is a three inch weld right here all of this is three inch i'll go over this way maybe you can see it a little better but there's a three inch weld right in here all of that is we don't weld it just right here the whole thing is welded so this is what you call flashing in then this is our counter flash so as the rain is and it's raining today but as the rain is coming across the roof if it's a heavy rain it wants to try to run up it's going to hit this and get diverted out but this was a special a curb assembly that I had to build because it was so close everything was all jammed together I had to make it all one piece so and that's some of the stuff that you're not going to get in another shop you know these are kind of complicated to build in the first place but then trying to merge them all together to get them to fit there's our little bell cap put on there right there so they uh, they're all the same way though they're all have a three inch flange on them they're all heat welded in and this is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO. It's what this is. It's the same exact product you'd find on a commercial building. You'd find it on a restaurant, an office building, a library. And it's a structured membrane, so it'll resist hail, it'll resist uh, tree branches, and so forth. And even if a tree branch did hit it, then we can make a patch like this big circle, and we can heat weld it on, and it won't affect your warranty. So we've got all that together. And then, like I said, all we're doing now is just some touch-ups to make sure it's all ready and good to go. And this is a moisture cured roof system anyways uh, excuse me a moisture cured caulking we run around everything with two layers so uh, we could put this new ladder on he didn't have a ladder so we put the ladder on for him and then uh, i think in one of the clips we did have a like i said a belly in there and we tried to pull most of it out i don't think we got every bit of it out but we got most of it out so this is our majestic so if you got any questions you can go and give us a call 423-475-7663 that's 475 423-475-ROOF that's what it spells 423-475-ROOF and um, you can obviously go to our website rvroofinstall.com we got a ton of videos up on YouTube watch those videos if you have roof issues watch the videos and then you, you'll see the way other people put the roof systems together if there was a better system than this, I'm not a proponent for the spray-on systems. The spray-on system, all it's going to do is just spray over what you have, typically. Um, I'm not a, a fan of that. If it worked, I'd get the machine, I'd do it myself. It just is not a good system on an RV. So the other thing I don't like about it, and I do have a video posted on there, and you can watch it as well about spray-on systems, but you're not going to get the curves. So every one of these roofs, it doesn't matter if you had quarter-inch steel, poured concrete, doesn't matter what you have on here per se for the membrane I'm not a fan of rubber either but that's another story but we'll say fiberglass if it doesn't have any curbs it's going to leak period it will leak that's the whole idea of the curbs on a especially on a flat roof and that's what this is and everybody thinks all they have to do is just take a vent put it to the roof deck put 28 screws around it and slather it with die core so it, it just does not work that way if it functioned that way a lot of these big commercial factories uh, and these food, especially food manufacturers and things like that, you, they would save a ton of money if that's the way it worked, but it doesn't work that way. Because these curbs are expensive to make, especially on a commercial end. Now all of these, we got to custom make all of these. So you can't buy these. We have to custom make every single one, all of these boots. If you get them for a commercial end, these would be huge. The curves would be huge. Everything would be oversized. You'd have the 
air conditioner up way too high. It just would not, it wouldn't look right at all. And it probably wouldn't function right. So what we did here is we designed everything so it works and functions properly for an RV. So, but uh, like you said, there's a lot of videos up there and, and you can see the way they put them together. And a lot of people have questions on them of how, uh, how to put one on. They're not really that easy. There's a lot of detail in there. One of the things that I noticed on another video that I watch is the way they go around with the sealant. Now this is a construction, a structural grade construction adhesive sealant. So it has bonding power and it seals. It's good to be outside. It's got properties built in it for to uh, combat UV light. So this is the product you want to use. You just don't want to use a sealant. A sealant is good for something around like a countertop that it's not going to, where a countertop, it's not going to move. It's stationary. So you don't, you can't use it on here because these are going to rack and twist and flex and so forth going down the road. There's a lot of headwind coming at it. There's a lot of vibration. So all of those factors, you know, you have to consider of what's going to last. The other thing that they don't do, and you can watch the videos, you have to, I don't know if you can see that little strike right above there. That's a primer. You have to prime all this. Every bit of it. If it's not primed, it won't stay. All these boots, they've all been primed. Everything's primed outside. That's where that little booger spot is there. Maybe I went too fast with the camera. Let me come back here a little bit and see if that helps. But you can see that there. That's primer. You have to use the primer on there, and it just takes time to put it on. You have to paint it on with a little brush. Because if you don't, it'll turn all jaundice. So, like, we clean these up pretty good, but there's still a little shadow there. You can still see some of the primer, but... So you have to kind of put it on so it doesn't look like a slopping mess. Or a hot mess. But, uh, like I said, watch the videos. If you got any questions, give us a call. At least you know where your money's being spent. Thanks for watching. And subscribe and share.